four in here. So I will call this meeting February 10th to order. Anybody need any packets or agendas? Rachel, you're all set? Yeah, I got them. If nobody minds, I'm going to close the door. Is oh, it too okay. hot? I just thought it might be a little quieter. That's fine. Okay, you have an agenda before you start a motion? Made. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, approval of minutes, January 13th. A motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Should I abstain since I was muted? No. Do we need to do a roll call since somebody's on the phone? I'm not doing it. Okay. We have, <laughs> we have a quorum here, on, unless yeah. we Got absolutely it. need to. Sorry, Peter, but. Well, if we've got a quorum you, here, we don't you want to vote. I don't believe I can vote anyhow. Yeah, vote. You can vote. Just you can vote by roll call. You don't right. count as the quorum. Yeah. Public comments. We have no public here. Introduction of guests. No guests. I'm not a guest anymore. You are not. <laughs> just hung up on Peter. Uh -oh. <laughs> Martha, may I please have his number again? Yeah. Uh, three one zero two six six ninety five eighty. Peter, I hung up on you. I apologize. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm here. Thanks. Okay, so we're going to move into our action discussion item, which is our report from our administrator. First one. How about that? How is that? <laughs> pretty exciting. Um, so I sent a pretty detailed report as part of the packet. Um, I have some stuff that I'd be uh, glad to, um, some stuff that I, I want to add to it. Uh, but I'm um, also glad to take any any questions before I launch. Anybody has any? No. So. All right. Yes. Sorry, I'm getting I'm getting dinged by Ellen here. Oh. All right, we're good. We're good. Um, okay. Uh, the train the trainers workshop was a I think a big success. Tom was there. He can test to the energy in the room too and um, got a lot of follow-up going on with some of the people who were there um, a lot of meetings this week which is great uh, this morning I sat down with um, Brian uh, at the IM for about an hour they are gonna run at least two articles about our work about the census about what it means what's at stake um, the first one may run this week, probably not, maybe next. And then um, the second one will run kind of in the thick of things, as, you know, as we just really get going in April. Um, uh, talk to them about some advertising. Um, I've reserved a that, you know, bottom front page banner for uh, 16th of April. Um, so I think, I think, I think they're on board to help us with our education outreach efforts, which is great. Great. Um, the one, I, I've got a lot of people who are really interested and excited to provide sites where people can get help on, on the phone or online, which is great. Um, the Athenaeum, the Boys Club, the Boys and Girls Club, excuse me, um, the Stop and Shop, both the Handlebar and uh, Jason has said that he'd be willing, and Wes has said he'd be willing to do it at the Bean, which I think at, gets to a different segment of the population. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still hoping that we can get Father Carlos on board. Um, I have a meeting with this guy, Mario, who's Peter's friend, uh, tomorrow to, to kind of figure out how to make that happen. Um, and um, I, th I think the food pantry may be a place where we can have an assistance center too. So I'm pretty excited about all of that. And, I, and I'm and i gonna talk to the people at the Salt Marsh Center because that seems like a, a good place to do it. Um, my biggest concern is getting volunteers. Um, and 
I think it's going to be kind of an all hands on deck thing and it's not going to be a huge time commitment and it's not that hard. Um, so I'm really hopeful that everybody on the committee will make themselves available um, to help once I get a schedule. Um, I can I can send that around. Um, help with help out the census help, or help help with? help people in one of our assistance centers get online in their language, get on the phone in their language, and answer the ten questions. Um, uh, the Census Bureau has a lot, like an overwhelming amount of resources <laughs> online. Um, and the Secretary of the Commonwealth has a number of resources available online. And the State Complete Count Committee, as part of the Secretary's office, has an overwhelming amount of resources online. But what I have found really useful is the knowledge that the Census Bureau recognizes that one of the barriers to being counted is obviously language. So there will be, the paper forms are in English and in Spanish, and there are um, dedicated phone lines for 13 different languages and dedicated websites for responding in 13 different languages. And then there's sort of help available in 59 languages on their website, which is very cool. Also ASL, there's a braille guide that's available in large print. So that's all pretty cool. Um, but I think what need, what will need to happen is in as we start publicizing where these sites will be and when the hours are and and what's available there, we're going to need people there not to speak those languages necessarily, but to armed with a list of websites and phone numbers and internet access for people um, to respond. So um, the biggest the biggest place that we plan to do this is at the Stop and Shop Cafe. And the management has been really helpful and really responsive. Um, we're gonna put stickers up at, or some kind of little something at every single register that says you can respond here. And those will be in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. And we'll have a big kind of easel thing at the cafe that, and that says the same thing with all of the hours posted. Um, so how so I'm picturing like random guy because I, I love what was I looking at? Something I was just looking at. This tells you who gets counted where. Mm -hmm. This is like the categories of our people are extended relatives such as grandparents, nieces, nephews, aunts, uncle, cousin, unmarried partners, housemates or roommates, roomers or boarders. So all of that says counted at the residence where they live and sleep most of the time. If they cannot determine, it's where they are on census day on April 1st. Mm -hmm. So this picture, I'm Joe Schmo guy, and I live, I might live in a room in a house with three other Joe Schmoes. Other rooms in that house, it might be Jose and his wife in one room with three kids. And in another room, it might be Melinda and her boyfriend and a kid. Who, how are we going to get people to A, I mean, I guess if they counted twice, it wouldn't be horrible because they pick up for people who don't get counted. But how are we going to help? There aren't necessarily heads of households in a lot of houses. Right. Right. They're all just kicking in rent. Right. So um, one form will get delivered to each residence. Now, as you say, there could be multiple households in a residence. Anybody that, anybody that lives there, unless they all want to report on one form, which is not likely, because I would assume that each individual group would consider themselves an individual household. No? No? Somebody would take, a, you think somebody would take a leadership role for that residence? I don't I, I don't think they would take a leadership role, but I also don't think anyone in that house would necessarily, if the three guys in the back room are just three random uh, bachelors, they're not going to be like, can we get a room for them? They're just going to be like, all right, don't count. No, but they can't get their own form because you can only have one form per residence. Mm -hmm. But you can go online or pick up the phone and say, I live at 123 Main Street and uh, my nearest cross street is Pleasant Street and I want to respond to the census. And there you go. And she explained that they have a process to eliminate duplicates. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if they come in like that, like if, if somebody who got the form was really, you know, wrote everybody down mm -hmm. and then some people in turn called in, mm -hmm. there'd be a way to 
to cap capture them. So what will people be doing at Stop and Shop? People helping people Can do I that. that. So oh, if you have a form, go home and get it and bring it back. No, no, you don't need your form. Peter, Peter wants to respond to that question. Yeah, yeah. The uh, just very quickly, the the problem we've just been talking about is one that is pervasive in large numbers of situations. Just you know, collections of people who have social arrangements together, but do not think of themselves as speaking for the entire occupancy of the dwelling unit. And so, a lot of people. My my own honest sense is that a lot of people will say, "Yeah, I, I could care less." Uh, they dropped a form off. I didn't pay attention to it. Those are the ones who were indifferent to the federal government. Now, in the stop and shop, the the way the, the the real hidden value here is that the stop and shop is an extremely target rich environment for precisely the kinds of people that we want to encounter and induce to sit down and uh, respond. It could be people who haven't paid much attention to the census, uh, it, but they've seen some of the advertising that says, don't forget to get counted. More likely, or uh, more important, it's going to be all of the people who are fearful of getting involved with being res with response. And the, the key here is that Mario Ornelas, who I know really well, has explained to me a number of aspects of the stop and shop that I wasn't aware of. He said, I said, why is it that you are recognized by so many people when we walk through the stop and shop together, 20 people stop you <laughs> along the corridors? The answer is that a lot of people recognize him and he knows in fact that many of the immigrant families who shop, or I should say family units shop, tend to do it in the evening as a family event to do all the shopping at once, like 10 o'clock at night. So we have a lot of intelligence. And the stop and shop is the one place where all of the people who were missing will be passing through. So that's why it's important. And, that, and the way I envision it working is we have a recognized person like Mario who is there. And then we have people who can work with individuals who are drawn to the honey pot and, and Mario can in, in introduce them to the person who will then help them spend 10 minutes getting counted for whatever social unit they happen to live in. Okay. Now, so so we, need, we need, we need about 10 I more Mar was, Marios. I'm not, I'm not sure when we, uh, this is a technical question about when are we able to start telephoning in <laughs> responses is that April 1st onward or before April 1st or what I would think that I, I think that we should be able to do that beginning at the end of March after these forms start being um, distributed yeah. right um, uh, and um, so we need to start we need to start recruiting more Mario's um, right and what I was thinking is the mission, the mission for Mario is to line up a half a dozen of the people he knows who are, you know, really inclined to volunteer and say, we want to schedule you. And, the, you know, anytime you can come in late at night, early in the morning, whatever, sit down for two, three hours, starting March, starting April 1st, and whatever commitment you can make to do it, like on Tuesday, whatever, and Mario, I'm seeing as the lead person who can try to formulate a schedule starting now by talking to people and say, would you be available? Would you be committed? You know, could we count on you for two hours, four hours, whatever day you happen to be free? So that he has as much coverage as we can possibly arrange. Well, I'll so discuss that, that with him. For an entire month. I'll discuss that with him to, um, when I meet with him tomorrow. I, I think in terms of like, I, I defer I defer to you. I was sort of thinking that if we could just say we're gonna staff this place on Sundays from noon until whenever for four Sundays, um, it would just make it a lot easier for people. It would be a, a simple schedule, you know, so people could, right. could know that and recognize that. 
Um, I would, yeah, that sounds like a good starting point, and I would say if we get just that done, that's great. And then I would ask Mario if, if he can fill in any other times, thinking particularly of it may be that Saturday evening or Sunday evening might be two strategic times when he says you'll get a lot of immigrant families coming in at certain times. I, obviously, we don't have to have everyone there, someone there every day because we don't have the staff and we probably probably be redundant. But yeah. over time, you know, let's say just every Sunday for four weeks or six weeks, and perhaps, uh, you know, I guess kind of a throughout the day sounds like a good idea on a Sunday because that's probably a big shopping day. But I would go on Mario's advice okay. as to when they shop. Okay, I'll talk to him about that tomorrow. Okay. Um, what about the complete count grant program update? Yeah, so we still, Margareta is uh, off island as you know, but she had received a request from the um, grantor asking us to revise our budget down from the original 36000 to 10000 which we did. Um, and it looks like that's what we're going to be getting. And the bulk of that um, will go toward uh, incentives for people in the form of um, wave passes or ferry tickets or um, highland tickets. Incentives for them to do the consensus or incentives? Incentives for, for them to staff these assistance centers. Um, and we had initially thought that we would do stop and shop cards, um, but they, the, they don't want us to... Um, they wanted to support transportation, didn't want us to, and I guess there were other, other applicants that were thinking along the same lines and they just didn't want to support retail gift cards. <coughs> and we can't pay them because of the way the grant is set up and held and whatnot. So it can't be just out of cash. Do we know why they wanted to go down so much in the grant request? They had two and a half million dollars to allocate statewide, and um, I, you know, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have the answer to that. It's, I think that they saw that we've already received a certain amount of money. Looking at who we are and where we are, maybe they decided that larger municipalities have larger challenges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. based on the number they got of applications, they probably decided this is how thin we're going to spread it. Yeah, and that's that or something. Yeah. So, um, okay. so, but not anyone, in hand yet. Did anyone hear a radio show? I got the link to it, and I didn't. I haven't had a chance to listen oh, to it on. yet. Oh come on, they were so I great. Know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, because yeah, Eleanor okay. was nice enough to send the link. They were so I think great. It was um, one thing I want to, I want to add. Um, I happened to find out that this Bethany person was on island today. And so I ran down to, to say hello to her. A um, couple things that are happening about recruitment and the sort of fingerprinting and training business. Um, uh, in terms of recruitment, this is a postal patron mailing that went out. Yep. Um, I personally did not get it, but okay. Uh, but at least I know the Census Bureau is on top of trying to recruit people. They've also hired... Um, a local person to be a recruitment assistant to the, di I don't know, it's such hierarchy, I can't even, a recruitment assistant to the regional recruitment person who has five counties in her territory. And the local recruitment assistant is a guy who I don't know, John St. Laurent. Okay. Okay. He mentioned he cow business. He lives. He mentioned he, he knows him. Two but doors he, down. Yeah. He, um, so he happened to be there. And uh, um, they're going to be on island doing finger, fingerprinting. The police department is going to be doing, can do fingerprinting. Oh, good. <coughs> Excuse me. Great. And the training will be at the Athenaeum. But I reiterated that I was concerned that the communication piece of this is just as important as the actual doing of it. I'm sorry. I'm joking. Yeah. Um, I'll talk for a second, Martha, while you get some water or something. I didn't, I just wanted to say, because you just mentioned to me, I didn't get to go meet Bethany before I came here because okay. 
a, a fire came up that I had to put out and I had to help somebody she with something. She said she sent you an email. So oh, okay. So maybe it. I'll get it. Um, how come they couldn't do the fingerprints? How come they had to switch it? Do you have any idea? Or maybe you don't know. Is it like it was supposed to be a, like we have to do it to school? Yeah. So we do that. Yeah. So yeah. they so this all came up because a friend of mine was um, provisionally hired as an enumerator, and he got an email saying, "Go online and make your appointment to be fingerprinted." So he goes online and he enters his zip code and the closest fingerprinting location that appears is in Hyannis. Oh. So he told me about it. And I talked to Jose and Laura, who are the district uh, people, um, the regional people. And I said, look, any work that we do as a committee is kind of pointless unless we have enough enumerators to follow up on right. that self-response period. So can you please help me figure this out? Yeah, they're not going to go to Hyannis. So as we know. I said, you know, I said the ge- people mm. understand, need to understand the geography here. And uh, 10 years ago, the fingerprinting was done at the police department and the training was done maybe at the school. Um, and so uh, anyway, it seems to be resolved, but... Uh, the communication around it does not necessarily seem to be resolved. So, yeah, get bad. getting there. Yeah, getting there. Um, and they are going to be doing more recruiting and advertising and whatnot. But Bethany seems to be a good seems to okay. have a handle on why it's important to fix that problem on the website and whatnot. Yeah. So. Okay. So uh, as of now, are the the person that we know locally is John St. Laurent. He's the one that's going to be. Yeah, he's still, he's, 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 he's provisionally approved too. So. Okay. Perfect. Can I ask a quick question about the food pantry that came up? Yes. Um, I just want to underscore that I think the food pantry is probably very important for getting, capture, capturing a very hard to count population. Mm-hmm. And whatever that is, let's be sure to make make sure that that's a high priority. I, it's, it may be 10 or 20 or 30 people, but I would bet that virtually <laughs> none of them are going to count. Probably more than that. More. Uh, you know, the, the one thing about that, and I'm not an expert and don't know a lot about the food pantry, and maybe you don't either, by the way. But my husband volunteered there last year, and people are. As you can understand, they're in and out. Their orders are ready. They come in, they take them, they go. They don't want to be seen at the food pantry. So that was the only thing I was going to say, Peter. They might, folks might be reluctant to stop and answer in that place because they want to get out of that place. So um, that's what I hear. What about the, have we tried the churches? So I can can answer both of those questions. Mm -hmm. So um, I may be saying her name wrong, Yeshi Palmo yes, came to the um, workshop on uh, on the 31st. That's so great. And she expressed an interest to me in helping through the food pantry, and she talked to Janice, and Janice is on, Janice Carrero, and there, she's on board with it. So I'm meeting with Yeshi Palmo, right? Both. Yeah, you, she, you say the whole name. Both it's it. not first name, last name, yeah. it's the whole. Yeah, so I'm meeting with her this week, to kind of go over the details. And I said, look, even if, even if we could just put some literature in their bags, um, and just say that that would be somebody in a lot better than nothing, somebody in, somebody in the other room who can help if they have the time. Um, and so we'll, we'll work out the details, um, about that to see, you know, yeah, at least, at least one sort of idea would be to say, uh, you know, they're in and out just if you can get a trusted person to hand them a census questionnaire or say, I, well, I guess you won't have a census questionnaire, yeah, but do somehow that, yeah. on a personal basis just say, I really want you to promise that you'll get and that you can do it this way, call this number to see that you do it, because the census is part of what causes us to be funded. You know, if you make a connection that this is part of where we get our money from, the count of people. More people count it, more money for the food pantry, then people will feel obliged to do it. Yeah. Has anyone talked to, um, you know, the people who own the landscaping businesses and all that, because April 1st, they'll be back up and working. I met a guy, I don't know who it was, and I think he came maybe to school committee or something. 
I think he came because his kid was being honored, but then he met, referenced something that I was talking about, and he talked about how he thinks family engagement is important. And then I said, you know, it'd be great to meet more of you, like in one room, so that we could let you know, like for example, when parent conferences happen, like if you could maybe let them come an hour early or even give them an hour grace period on that day and support the community, still pay them, but let them come. Um, so I don't know if, if we've reached out to that group or how you get them all in a room, but if we could get them in on it, like, hey, workers, make sure you get counted. That might help because it helps them eventually because they, they, you know, they need everyone to be healthy and all that. Um, excuse me, I've been talking to Christy about what the chamber can do in terms of reaching out through employers of all and all kinds of businesses. So we are on point with the big landscaping. The same time of year. The yeah. chamber is a great resource for that. Even if we could get them. Just say put up, uh, you know, where they meet at the shop in the morning. Even if they put up a poster and they would be willing to say, hey, guys, you know, would you please do this? That the, might, you know. The trading post is huge if you've been there. That's yeah. where a lot of people go for lunch. I put up um, some, uh, you know, job posters there. You were going to, um, you said you were going to mention something about the churches, Martha, because I was going to ask you, um, and I know you've got about Father, you know, trying to connect with Father Carlos in here, but Margareta had told me that the responses from the churches has been cool. Is, is that yeah. so? Mm -hmm. I'm so, so disappointed. Yeah, so yeah. we have um, one faith leader who is really not willing to compromise their relationship with the immigrant and refugee yeah. community by treading on, yeah. on this. Um, I, I put in my my notes, um, I've been trying to connect with Tom Lingle about the dinner tomorrow night mm -hmm. because I yeah, thought so that would be a, a good place to... I, yeah, I, we had talked about that last but time. But he, we had an initial back and forth about trying to set up a time to meet and then he kind of fell off the face of the earth. So, um, anybody know him? Anybody? I don't know him. What's the else involved? It's a community dinner. It's at the American Legion. It's once a month um, in the off season. And I don't, I don't know if it would be weird if I just showed up there. You know, what you could do is you could reach out to Reverend Ruth Smalt, who's the president of the Interfaith Council. Yeah. Reverend Langlo is the vice president. Okay. And that might be a good way. She's very, you know, you'll find her on the the, the web page of the yeah. church. I she came into my office last week about something else. She's very outgoing. I'm She's sure great. she'll respond. Yeah. Are they concerned about just? federal government misuse, I mean, is that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess it's easy for me to say. I can understand. If right. you have trust yeah. with somebody, you would, you don't want to lose it, no, you, you know? Kelly had that point right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And well, nothing's worked. <laughs> Nothing since then. It's not like anything's gotten better. Yeah. 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 The it's climate's like, just getting scarier and scarier. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, I'll try to reach Ruth. If I, if, if I can make one more suggestion about trying to reach trying to persuade and engage the faith leaders, uh, my strong suggestion would be to consult Mario Ornelas, tell him what the problem is, and just say, do you know who we could work through, and then enlist him to help you work through that person, because he knows the people who are connected to these faith communities, and he sort of has the connection that will be the entree that could perhaps make things work. There is a natural kind of, I think, concern with, you're asking me to have this bond of trust with my congregation and at the same time uh, relate to something where I'm not sure it's legit. Mario can bridge that gap for you. And the kind of information that we need, although none of it can be trusted, is in a brochure that supposedly the federal government can't access this information and do something. Although now we know ICE is going, they're, do, they're using everything, like Facebook so, apps. And, but this is scary. If you think about it, you're putting down your name, your birthday. I mean, for most people, that's enough to identify them. Mm -hmm. And we know it's, what, the 16th Amendment or something? But I don't think most people know that, let alone trust it. So there. At the workshop, um, at the workshop, uh, 
the representatives from the statewide complete count committee underscore multiple times, because as you can imagine, this came up there, um, that I, the best we can do is to say there is a law that says that your individual data is protected. It cannot be released mm -hmm. to any other federal, state, or municipal agency for any purpose, and it's protected for 72 years, and the the data is aggregated, it's statistics but that is inform that all this stuff. Down, like, in the brochure? I think that's what needs to be hanging up, and that's what yeah, we need to I pass out is. to people. Like, yeah, don't I think worry, it, this is the, you know, we need that. <clears throat> I know, you there, know, that there's that confidential. Mm. And maybe even simplified language, because a lot of those are kind of... Yeah. Well, words. you put it on your poster, that yeah, way, the census. It and also so. says here, your sponsors, and this is the thing, this is... These are things that are by uh, the statewide complete count committee. Mm -hmm. Trifolds are in English, Spanish, and Portuguese, and Haitian Creole. Um, and it says your responses cannot be used against you by any government agency or court. They can only be combined with others to create statistical analyses. Individual household data can't be shared with anyone for 72 years. There are big penalties for anyone who breaks this law up to five years in prison and a $250,000 fine mm -hmm. per violation. So. In addition to all this paper that's out there and all this stuff that's online that nobody else but me or other, anybody else who's interested in this stuff is going to read, um, I have taken kind of the best of the Mira FAQs and all this stuff and I'm putting it together in a document that we will circulate through the schools um, in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. I think we may put it in an, as an insert in the Inquiry Mirror. We will. Um, I've asked Peter if he would send it out through the Civic League. Um, I've asked, um, I've asked uh, Margareta to share it through other nonprofits. I'll ask Chrissy to share it through businesses so that it's, so it's out there in every possible way. I mean, you can lead people to water, but you can't make them drink. But the idea is to convey that, you know, we are assured that this is safe and confidential now. Did we, did I, or did I, I imagine this, didn't we hear that there was some sort of statement from the legal community or from our attorney general or something that said, you know, they're willing to back this up and, you know, if there's any misuse? There, there was, I thought there was some discussion about. Well, I didn't hear about that. I didn't, maybe, you know. yeah. And if not, maybe there should be. Um, you know, that's. For you, Tom, kind of. Who in, I'll look, who I'll look in power up. will back that up? Yeah, like it was somebody like more, you know. Mara Healy is the Attorney General, so yeah. maybe that was and it. I mean, yeah. She's not shy yeah. about filing mm -hmm. suits uh, where yeah. she views things as, you know, being wrong. And, um, you know, if there was some. Can you find that out for me? Yeah. If there was some sort of commitment to that, that, you know, that, you know. So someone's not a lot, you know, like, oh, yeah, little old me, and now I'm in the ice truck, and yeah. no one's going to help me. Right. Exactly. You know, well, there, there's some, like, wait a minute, there was a resource center, or there's a census abuse center, or, or something. Mm -hmm. So there's this webinar on Friday that's uh, being um, presented by the Lawyers for Civil Rights. Um, and it's, Is that what you sent out today? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I sent it out last week, too. And I think that... It, it's from noon to one on Friday, and if you can participate at all, I think it will answer a lot of your questions. And I feel like, uh, you know, I've had people, I've had non-English speakers that I've started speaking to, in, or non-native speakers started that I started speaking to in the course of this work, and they've said to me, "Well, is there any rights organization that you know endorses mm -hmm. this?" And I'm so grateful to be able to say yes, yeah. um, and. Really, what it comes down to is, you know, yes, we understand that there's fear of trepidation. We, yes, we understand that you question whether this is really safe. But this is what we are told, and this is this is what's at stake by you know for being for being happened. Mm -hmm. And it's really about repeating that wherever wherever we can. So, if I could just interject a very short comment here. Uh, you hit a hard upper limit on this that's probably you get 70 or 80 percent of the population that you're after you know buying that story the simple challenge that we have is we need to get father carlos to 
say it on Sunday to his congregation, and then those 20% will believe it. That's the only way you can do it. I mean, I mean, I should say it's the only way you can do it with a significant fraction of hard to count population. It's pretty widely recognized now that the damage has been done and you cannot undo it anymore. Uh, it's pervasive. You can say all you want, and that's the rational model. You know, I know there are laws out there, but the immigrant community is going to trust someone. And Father Carlos and his counterpart are the ones that can make that connection to the rain remaining 20%. So that should always be our primary objective. Mm -hmm. And from what, I, from what I've heard from the Portuguese speaking community and the Spanish speaking community, the distrust or the, or the fear is more focused in the Spanish speaking community. Um, right. I, you know, I, have no, I don't know if anybody has an estimate of, and and I know nobody can ask this, but I, is there a is there some kind of generally accepted sense of what percentage of our immigrant population is undocumented? I think any of us know. How I don't many think anybody really knows, are. but I certainly would say it's not a trivial percent. Yeah. And yeah. The, the the responses we've seen in the past to the appearance of a Coast Guard vessel in the harbor. And three hours later, 200 people didn't show up for work right. because they were fearful of an ice raid. Yeah. That will tell you what the level of yeah. fear is. And they haven't forgotten that. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I think uh, Jason Bridges at the workshop had a really interesting reaction to um, the, the piece of information that was shared, which was that we want people to, to know that they can respond online or by phone and that if they do that, nobody's going to come knocking on their door. But in an effort to convey that, you know, somebody's going to come to your door, but they will have an official ID, Jason said, well, you know, it may as well say ICE on it because if it looks like a government ID, it's you not... Tell them not to open the door. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I did hear from the police today that they are stepping up um, student visas. The student visa, right? A lot of extended student the visas. Of extended. That's a new category, which. Yeah. And maybe. We've got a lot of those, but not, I mean. And maybe that won't happen until yeah. later. Who knows? I, you know, in a couple of months, I know my. My daughter-in-law is about to apply for a green card. My son married a girl from Colombia, and her, and they're right about at that point because she had to get like a certain waiver from her. She was like a post-college graduate type of visa, and um, her lawyer, which is a big immigration lawyer in Boston, told her that he wanted to get her application in before February 20th because the Trump administration is coming out with a new 18-page additional additional application that they're going to pick and choose people and make them apply. Well, because they have to be highly qualified now. They yeah. Want people with degrees and that, yeah. Yeah. And, um, but it's all, yeah, it's, it's kind of along that line. Mm -hmm. He well, just doesn't, uh, you know, it's just going to be sort of, a, from what I understand at first, sort of cherry picked. And maybe people know about that. I, it's the first I've heard about it. <laughs> but, you know, I think you're right, Martha. There's, you can't. You can lead them to the well, but you can't make them drink. But I think, I think you've done an incredible job in the last mm -hmm. month. A lot of things, and I think mm -hmm. if we just keep a really good job, just keep getting the posters and the things out there, and what the grant money will buy, and the fact that it was already in the census. That's all we can do is keep flooding it. The hard part is, as we all know, is that people don't like to read stuff. I know. <laughs> people will come in my office and they'll go, "What's this?" I'll say, "Well, I don't know." Why don't you open it and see? <laughs> Why did they send me this? I don't know. I, I think, but, and I think too. And it's like not every, even anything to do with me. But. Everything is like background noise for everything yeah. else. So, if you see it in your town census form, or you see it in a school newsletter, or you see it on a poster somewhere, you or see you, it in the paper. Eventually, you might read one. Yeah, yeah. And so. I, I just had another little thought for some of our posters and literatures, and I don't know if we've already discussed this, but the High Line and the Steamship offices, if they'd let us, and um, and I'm always happy to help with anything downtown if I can, 
and then maybe one of those um, maybe we could consider in April after the weather gets better maybe we could consider doing a couple questionnaire assistance centers downtown stop and shop maybe he'd let us have a little table you know, if the weather's good outside or inside and just have it there once or twice because there are those people that hit those from the boats to the boats yeah. that you know don't have cars or get mid island um okay well i think could i just toss out one idea that uh you know something we, we talked a few minutes ago about the uh, i think the seasonal workers coming in beginning to arrive in march april and the civic the uh, chamber it occurred to me that one thing the chamber might do if we gave the specific instruction is to request of all their employers, their larger employers, that when your seasonal workforce arrives in March or April, the ones that you know are going to be around until, let's say, October or September, the first thing you should do after you've got them properly housed and acclimated is to say, we need to sit you down so that you can count it on the census. And if, you, if they could capture that segment, we have a huge increase in people who are eligible to be counted because they would say my usual place of residence on April 1st is this, and I will be here for more than six months. So we've at least put them in the pipeline, the Census Bureau can sort out you know, how they want to handle them. But I think that could be a very, very large number of people, landscapers, for example. Mm -hmm. and they would not, you know, having arrived a few weeks before, they would not be focused on this as any kind of a priority. They would just go right by them. The chamber is in a position to make that happen if we tell them what to do. I'll talk to Christy about it. Yeah, or have her talk to me if you want, and I can explain the details. But there's, this, is a, this is a really big strategic opportunity. Mm -hmm. We could get a huge number of people. They may not all be actually entitled to be counted as by the census, but that's for the census bureau to sort out. We get the numbers. Yes. Is Christy sort of taking over now that David's, or is, how is that working? As of now, on an interim. Interim. Yeah, I think there's some kind of team situation happening. Okay. And and she's a closet demographer also. She and I. <laughs> have a whole <laughs> sure. So I can explain to her what's going on, and she'll get the picture right away. Okay. All right. Anything else? Uh, it seems like we've covered your report, Martha. Mm -hmm. Implementation of 2020 Census Integrated Partnership and Communication Plan. I think we've kind of covered that, or do you have more? Unless Peter wants to speak to that. Peter, anything on that? Uh, nothing on my end, no. Okay. Um, implementation of initiatives to promote the count. Again, I think we're done that. Uh, Census Bureau updates. I have nothing. I have a minor thing about they wanted confirmation of the boundaries, but pretty much all set. Changing a little with the shoreline, but otherwise not changing. <laughs> so, um, field operations, I think we've covered that, unless anybody has anything else to add. Just that Martha had asked in her report about ideas with the salt marsh and I, I didn't know if you had any ideas about her working with the salt marsh Rachel or me no yeah. I was gonna actually suggest it yeah. and then I saw it in yeah. her in the packet in her report because yeah. that's a place that I think and you'll have a captive a audience will. there yeah and they'll be what's, very willing yeah and I it's when I went I, I went down there with a the job with a job poster mm -hmm. and I talked to Ginny who is like it was a tenant of ours you know oh. 100 years ago so I'll, I'll, ch I'll chat with her again about that, um, unless there's somebody else there that I should talk to. No, it would just be Ginny or Laura, but either okay. would be fine. Great. I'm sure they'll be very yeah. welcome I mean, to the idea, great. don't you think? Extremely. Yeah. And there's a lot of people who go through the senior center that aren't just seniors. Right. They have the Social Security Administration that comes and stuff like that. So there's a big population of people that kind of filter through that great. building. And have you been to Wilbur's Barber Shop on Amelia Drive? I've seen it, but yes. I've never been there. That's a hub. If okay. you can drop things off and talk to Wilbur, he's really outgoing. He speaks um, some English. He's also like the DJ at the news on Saturday night, okay. Latin night. 
but he pretty much knows every Latino who gets a haircut on the island. So if you can get him, he's Dominican. Um, but I think he'd probably let you have some of these and just explain to him like we want people counted, even if it's ten guys in a house. Like I think I know it's in here, but I don't think they it's, quite it's get dense. that. Mm-hmm. Like like. Even us in our weird Nantucket housing situation, it counts. So yeah. he's, I think he's kind of a key guy. Do you know him personally? I do know him-ish. But well, not like and Jackie personally. in my office dates Marvin, who cuts hair there as well. So, oh, yeah, okay. so I was going to say, I, I know uh-huh. Wilbur as an acquaintance. I could talk to him, too. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm perfectly happy to walk in off the street and, and talk to him. But He's a if, friendly guy. I he's super outgoing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can you drop a name. I yeah. Could, I, can, yeah. I drop, can I drop your hands? Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Do you know Jackie that dates Marvin? Yeah. I know somebody Everybody that knows, knows her. Jackie, yeah. <laughs> you know, Marlene, I'm the she told me that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Just speak, like, slowly. Okay. I could, I okay, could try other, speaking Spanish, but... <laughs> other business. <laughs> Anybody with other business? Other than I know... <laughs> Tom, we've got to get a replacement for you. I've, I've got to go back to the NPNEDC for that. Um, Wait, why do we need? When are you leaving, Tom? Are you? What's going on? Yeah, I'm going off to school, so um, oh, good, April, good. like mid-April, I'll be gone. Where are you going? Uh, UC Berkeley. Oh, good for you. I actually thought you for, might already be gone. What are you going for? A public policy. Oh, that's awesome. Good for you. Thank you. Are you still um, our person now? Huh? Like our, are you our representative or something like that? I, I'm our liaison <laughs> for our representative. Oh, I thought you were the so, representative. Same thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then you so, can leave. That's okay. I hate to cause <laughs> a, can't liaise a vacancy in the studying. committee, but it yeah. sounds like Taylor will be great. Who's yeah, Taylor, Taylor Schultz has um, oh. expressed interest. And oh. She is, uh, what's her title? Uh, right? Director of Human Services. Okay, so Not she to be would... confused with Human Resources. Right, right. So she would be... Uh, I think good person. She's Jay yeah. Amanda's daughter? Yes. Okay. Yep. That's what happens. <laughs> that includes you too, Rachel. You were just a kid. Um, if I ask, um, ask one question that mm-hmm. may not really be appropriate for the meeting, but since I have you, um, one of the organizations that was suggested at the workshop as a place for outreach is the Family Resource Center. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, is there a particular person there that what's the new person's name? Uh, I don't know. I'm good. looking at email. She's new. She's great. Yeah, they're at the um, on Friday. Actually this Friday we have um, our L provider group, maybe if you wanted to pop in with a bunch of you had a bunch of these. Ready to go. Ready to go. We could have sneak you into our L provider meeting. What time? Uh, 10 o'clock, I'm pretty sure. Do you have any other swag that she would bring? I do. I I don't necessarily, I don't know. I don't have lip balm. I have pens. I left all the lip balm here because I thought it was kind of gross and been (laughs) dragged around. I have pins. I have... The little pads? Those are... I have a couple couple of those, yeah. Um, the, The resource center woman will come. The, um... Brooke Moore just started coming. I forget where she came housing from, but assistance. she's awesome. Yep. Where? Housing assistance. Housing assistance. Um, yeah, she came from churches. Um, L- Linda comes yeah. or Debbie yeah. Ruth's Walker. Church. Um, yeah. Uh, Congregation, yeah. Fair Winds and the other place. I was one called Fair Winds Fairground. Um, all of those people come to this meeting. So okay. people who provide like mental health and wraparound services to our L families okay. come. So I think that would be a place where you can explain it. And then they also might be like, oh, I don't want to turn my people in inadvertently. So they might come. But they might also be like, you know, a lot of our families are legal. Yeah. And right. or they, they TPS, um, ICE knows where they are. They're, right. they're TPS anyway. Yeah. They, they, we have DACA kids, you know, yeah. I'm working for me. Yeah. Everyone, the government knows where they are. It's right. really just the undocumented people who right now are under the radar that might choose not to get counted, and I think that's fair enough, especially if they're, you know. But I don't, I don't necessarily think that's have that, people. but I might have. I might have other people. I mean, I could. I could make. I could probably make some of those. I'd have to figure out how yeah, to do that. You have like the multilingual and the color and all that ready to go, and then you could give them each yeah. like twenty or thirty. I bet they'd all be willing to at least put it in their spaces. Okay. Um, and a Spanish, Portuguese, and Haitian Creole. 
Uh, we don't have much Haitian Creole here. We have okay. mostly Spanish and Portuguese. Well, and not in the school system anyway. Be, be great. Well, then some yeah. Haitian Creole, maybe. Yeah. I mean. Um, okay. Um, will you just. Could you, you? Yes, I'm looking for. A, okay. Um, sounds good. And if you need to make copies, you know, we have a nice color file here. Okay. Come in and do that. Great. All right. Anybody Andrew, else? I have one. Yeah, I have one other thing to suggest just came to mind. I don't know if, is, is Kelly Cooney there today? I am. She sure is. Okay, Kelly, um, the, since we now know that we don't really have a direct incentive type thing like stop and shop cards to hand out to people, um, I'm thinking that we probably need to have some kind of a way of formalizing or at least thinking about and getting approval for a process whereby we can uh, recruit, quote, volunteer high school seniors for some of these faith meetings that we're going to need them to attend. Uh, That's you know, relative, to, to yeah. Gather up people and that I feel fine with. I wasn't behind and sending it, our kids out to knock on people's doors because that's such a safety issue. Mm -hmm. But if they're volunteering mm -hmm. at the Stop and Shop, then we just need to, you can email me, and then okay. I'll just forward it to the high school, um, different right. people who are in charge of community service hours. Okay. As long as... Um, yeah, and Dr. I was just Butler saying, there's some kind of community service credits that the school, that, that basically they have to fulfill, and this would be an ideal thing if we could get that defined as, you know, you want to satisfy that requirement, go out and do these things and you will have done it. And I just want to make sure someone is looking into that because all I know is I, I can email Mike Kozort, but he's going to pass it on to somebody else. And there needs to be somebody who's kind of the, the lead person on So if that. you send and me an email with we, the dates you know, of, of what that. it is, and semi-official, and then I'll forward it to the people who recruit the kids. Okay. And that okay. way we'll get some Spanish and other not just English. Right. Perfect. That's great. That's great. You know, one thing I was wondering with Stop and Shop, I mean, Stop and Shop sometimes donates things on their own where we don't have to go buy things. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if, if we did do something like, you know, at the end of every week, like picked a winner or some, you know, who, who submitted it last week and we did a drawing or something, would something like that be allowed? I don't know. Will you ask them? Yeah. Thanks. You know, just to... Um, great if somebody could win. Food. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I know. I, yeah. I mean, I wonder if, if it could be like, um, you know, if you... if you if, So what you're suggesting is if you volunteered every week, everybody's... All the volunteers' names get to put into a hat and then some, you yeah. know, yeah. you pick one for... You could ask all... I bet it wouldn't even just be a stop and shop. I'm sure if you asked fairgrounds and wherever... You, they'd give you yeah, a little fair places like twenty dollars, you know, for whatever Geronimo's. And then it's if, if it's a donation, we haven't paid for it, but it's just a little another incentive, you know. That because I, I know. one point I picked up from talking to Mario Ornelas was that his sense was that the uh, <clears throat> the, the the members of the immigrant community, you know, kind of the the lead people that we've been talking about and talking, trying to connect with. He said that he thinks that they will do, they will see this as an important volunteer role for them to play. So in that sense, they don't need to be incentivized. They just need to be given the opportunity to spend the uh, few hours they can make available to us. And I'll give you an example. He told me about Noe Pineda, who's the custodian at the airport short guy from mm -hmm. El Salvador that, you know, cleans the restrooms. Yeah. Noe is a good friend of mine and of Mario's, and Noe um, actually owns a home in Hyannis. His family lives there. He comes and works at the airport all week. So weekdays or whatever work days he has, he has time off, and it's the kind of thing where he could say, yeah, I could show up at a stop and shop in the evening for two or three hours on days X through Y, and you know, and I'm, and would be delighted to do it without compensation, without incentive. So keep in mind that there are two levels of incentivization here. One is uh, this personal sense of giving back to the community, which is very strong in some of these communities. And the other is saying, well, I'm spending some time, but I'm also getting something back. 
which is whatever you could give them in return. And, and you know what, Noe is um, very well known in the El Salvadoran community here, and he's very well known in the um, St. Mary's Church community. Right. So he'd be a good connection that people, That's a face people would recognize he's been around. Pop stars just under Mario. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's knowing, been around for years. will be our advocate. <laughs> yeah, thinking, that's a great idea. I was thinking mm -hmm. about when we did the, the bus, when we started the bus, we, we had a, you know, a, a thing like, I'm riding the bus, you remember this? So yeah, we had different yeah. people, yeah. you know, and their pictures, like, yeah. you know, if you had, I just filled out my census form or, yeah. you know, you had, you know, a couple. <clears throat> do you think, do you think that, do you think that non-English speakers read the I&M? I don't know. I mean, I've seen ads in there in other languages. It depends I've, on if they speak English. Yeah, I feel like maybe not as much. Yeah. Mm. So maybe we could, you know, if we it's could just get... just a feeling. But. If we could get pictures of these people and maybe, you know, like... Maybe there's like a... You know how they do the... the on the street interviews or whatever mm -hmm. that's called. Yeah, and that we was could do that, but maybe we could then, you know, put it on the website or something or share. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. people could share that, share it on social media. I'm not a yeah. social media maiden at all. Um, yeah, but they but, would know. They, yeah. they, and you know, just what the question that Peter was just asking you and the whole stop and shop made me think. I wonder. Well, actually, what you were saying about get it for free, I wonder if Stop and Shop, because they're so generous for certain events, would ever, like, say, okay, here's a case of waters that we can put on ice, you know, the mini ones, and here's some bags of pretzels or something. But if people come over and their kids Probably are standing there, it's like, here's a cold bottle of water, here's some pretzels or something. Would right. you answer these ten questions? Right. So you, you know, draw, over. draw mm -hmm. the children over, or draw the adults over, too. Mm -hmm. You might want to ask Geshe Palm. Let me Palm. Just give you one further extension of that idea. My picture that I've got is you take the picture of Noe Pineda and you take a picture of Mario and Ornelas, uh, 11 by 14, put it on a poster that stands outside as you walk into the stop and shop and say, both of them with a big smile pointing at you saying, while you're here, stop by and get counted on the census. People will look at that and say, oh, I know those two guys. I, they'll pay attention to it. Perhaps have it in Spanish. There was a That's huge billboard on Route 3 going into Boston when I drove into Boston last week, and it was um, and it was a father and a son playing in the yard or something, and it said, everybody counts, so we count everybody. I thought that was a nice mm -hmm. sentiment. That's, that's, yeah. that's a nice language. Yeah. There you go. That's the, that's the tagline. Okay, anybody else? Going once, twice, motion to adjourn. Motion made. Second. Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Martha.